Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 1st, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. Today we had a huge raptor flight including some big rarities and some nice first of year birds, so I hope you stay tuned for the whole update. Kim and I started out the morning at Burger Park where it was a bit foggy. Here we have a warbler that's blue on top, a lot of black to the face and the side, and a brilliant bright white handkerchief. This was the season's first black-throated blue warbler, a nice adult male. And nearby we had another warbler that was mostly black. We see some white underneath and some nice orange highlights. This is a male American red start. At Burger Park we had a total of 55 species. Next, Kim left to go join a bird walk and I went over to the owl woods. This male rose-breasted grosbeak gave me a really nice look as it was perched up singing. At the owl woods, I had a total of 27 species, including 19 ruby crowned kinglets and a nice variety of warblers. Next, I headed over to Braddock Bay Park, where it continued to be quite foggy. Now that it is May, the town has opened the bathroom building at the park. While waiting for the fog to clear, I walked around without my camera, which is nice to do every once in a while, just so you can focus on looking at the birds with binoculars. And this tree in particular had a really nice mix of warblers. There were a couple yellow warblers, some palm warblers, some Nashville warblers, and some chipping sparrows. I went up on the hawk platform around 11 a.m. and there were a few sharp-shinned hawks starting to move through the fog. And I could detect them from the red-winged blackbirds giving their alarm calls. It slowly continued to brighten up as that fog lifted. And surely but steadily the sun started to pop out and that launched a pretty big raptor flight. One of the first raptors to get up was the continuing Swainson's hawk. Again, look at those long, somewhat narrow wings and the dark trailing edge to the wing because of the dark flight feathers. Those are the primaries and secondaries. And here's the top side of the Swainson's hawk. And I'm really enjoying seeing this bird multiple days in a row because this is a species that I've only seen a handful of times in my life. As the sun continued to come out, I was seeing some broad-winged hawks come up, and there was a light to moderate northeasterly wind, so I knew that would be pushing them away from the lake shore. So I decided to get off the platform and go stand near my car in case I needed to make a quick transition over to Frisbee Hill Park. Just after I did that, Kim arrived with pizza for lunch, but there was no time for eating pizza because there were a lot of hawks in the air including this one. Just minutes after Kim pulled in, I looked over to my left and fairly close was this raptor going by. And at first I saw the real thin wings and thought maybe it was just the Swainson's hawk. But as I got a better look at it, I could tell that it was a Mississippi kite. To identify a Mississippi kite, we're looking for really thin, narrow, pointed wings and a somewhat skinny, long tail, completely gray underneath and a very buoyant flight style. Mississippi kite is a species we're always hoping for and we usually get one per season but some years we don't even get any and usually they come right at the end of May at least uh, all the ones I've had previously were on May 20th or later so it was really surprising to get one on this date but looking at the photo we can tell that this is an adult because it has just completely gray undersides no immature coverts to the wings and no banding on the tail and I think that explains why this one came so early. It's typical for raptors that the adults are migrating first and the young ones come later. And the ones we usually see are the sub-adults. So that's why they come at the end of May. And I'm thinking that since this is an adult, it's just migrating a bit earlier. And I checked the eBird map and this is the farthest north that a Mississippi kite has been seen so far this year. And we also had this large dark raptor with a white patch in each wing in the base of the tail and a small head. This is an immature golden eagle. At Braddock Bay Park, I had a total of 64 species. The northeast lake breeze was pushing the flight line inland, so I had Kim move over to Frisbee Hill Park, and then as soon as she got over there and took over the count, I got in my car and drove over, and we had big kettles of broadwings and vultures and other species mixed in right over the parking area at Frisbee Hill Park. And we complain a lot about Frisbee Hill and how lousy it is and how many hours we spend there seeing very little. Well, this was one of the few times that we get over there and have fantastic looks at migrating hawks, especially broadwings. Here's just a small portion of a group of broadwinged hawks. And looking at this photo, it looks like all of them are still adults. 
and here's a closer look at a typical adult broad-winged hawk. We see that they're a small buteo with somewhat pointed wings because the wingtips are made up of four feathers, one, two, three, four, making them more pointed than red tails or red-shouldered hawks. We see brown barring on the underside, and we see a dark trailing edge to the wings and a black tail with some white bands on it, especially one prominent white band that you would see from a distance. Those are the most obvious field marks that make this an adult broad-winged hawk. We are starting to see some juvenile broad-winged hawks mixed in. Notice that the juveniles do not have that bold dark trailing edge to the wings, so the wings just have a little bit less of an outline to them, and notice that instead of that brown barring underneath, they have more of brown spotting. And finally, some more clouds rolled in, slowing down the flight, and I had a chance to eat some slices of pizza. We also took that opportunity to move up onto the hill of Frisbee Hill Park. Here we have a hawk with a long tail and long wings with rounded tips. We should be thinking excipiter. We see orange barring underneath, making this an adult. And we see a relatively small head, and it's hard to judge the tail, but it looks squared off or slightly notched. This is a small excipiter. It is an adult sharp-shinned hawk. And we had over 100 sharp-shinned hawks migrate today. While we were down in the parking lot, we actually saw two golden eagles soaring together, but we were looking through the trees, so I wasn't able to get photos. But from up on the hill, we had another immature golden eagle, our fourth one of the day, come by. And again, notice those white patches in each wing and the base of the tail, and the relatively small head with a golden nape. Here's the upper side of the same golden eagle, and a lot of the golden eagles we're seeing right now are juveniles with large white patches in the wings, and a lot of times those white patches are even visible on the top side as you see here, and they have a lot of white to the base of the tail. Here we have a large buteo where we see a distinct belly band and dark patagial bars. This is a red-tailed hawk, but we see that it does not have a bold trailing edge to the wings or a red tail. This is a juvenile red-tailed hawk, and it seems like most of the red tails we're seeing migrate now are the juveniles, and we had a few dozen of them today. Here's one of the osprey that are nesting on the cell phone tower, and here's the bird it was chasing off, an adult bald eagle. I had a small flock of songbirds fly over that are pale underneath, but we can see white outer tail feathers. These are American pipits. And just after 5 p.m., everyone else had left, and I was just staying a little bit longer to count the last few turkey vultures that were trickling through, and I saw this woodpecker fly in, and we see a completely red head, a black back, and a large white patch on the wing, making this an adult red-headed woodpecker. And I knew this is a bird that Kim would want to see, and thankfully she had just gone to Burger Park, which is just a few minutes away, so I texted her, and she rushed over, and I kept the bird in my spotting scope the entire time just to make sure that it was there when she got there. And she ran all the way across the field and was coming up the hill. And I just looked out of the scope and glanced over to see how close she was. And when I looked back in the scope, the bird was gone. But thankfully, we were able to refind it. And it even did a really nice flyover for us. In flight, red-headed woodpeckers are unmistakable with those huge white patches in the secondaries. And when they're perched up in good light, they're a really beautiful species. And I wish all rare birds were this easy to identify. And by the end of the afternoon, it had really cleared up to completely blue skies. From Frisbee Hill, I had a total of 47 species. I did an eBird trip report for the day, and altogether I had nearly 100 species again. I had seven new species for the season today. From Burger Park, I had Northern Water Thrush, Black-Throated Blue Warbler, and Rose-Breasted Grosbeak. In the Owl Woods, I picked up Oven Bird and Northern Perula. At Braddock Bay Park, I had the Mississippi Kite. And at Frisbee Hill, I had the Red-Headed Woodpecker. Taking a look at the Hawk Count Report for our Migrant Raptor totals, today we had 207 Turkey Vultures, 2 Osprey, 28 Bald Eagles, 11 Northern Harriers, 115 Sharp-Shinned Hawks, 3 Cooper's Hawks, 1,888 broad-winged hawks, 21 red-tailed hawks, 4 golden eagles, 1 American kestrel, and 1 Mississippi kite, for a total of 2,281 migrating raptors. That brings our season total to 54,884. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking like a mix of sun and clouds with a high in the low to mid 60s. Winds west shifting northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So really it's a decent wind and I would expect a pretty steady flight tomorrow. 
maybe a little bit better in the morning when the winds are more westerly and less so as the winds shift more northwest in the afternoon. But overall, I would expect moderate migration. Hopefully we'll get a good cleanup flight after today's big push. For Friday, we're looking at intervals of clouds and sun, then more clouds for the afternoon with the high in the mid-60s. Winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour, so we'll see exactly how those winds settle in. If it stays more east, then we might end up with an okay flight. If it shifts more northeast, then that will push the flight away from the lake shore and might only have light migration. And for Saturday, we're looking at occasional rain with a high in the low 60s. Winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so... It's a good wind, but we'll have to see what ends up happening with the rain. If it's too rainy, that will prevent a raptor flight, although it could be a good day for other migrants, such as shorebirds and songbirds, stuff getting knocked down from the rain. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it to see if they take some rain out of the forecast, and if so, we might end up with a raptor flight. If it stays rainy, then maybe not so much. All right, well, we always think of May as being the most exciting month of spring birding, and we really started it off with a bang today. With a lot of first of season species and getting to see the Swainson's hawk again and the Mississippi kite and then ending the day with the red-headed woodpecker. Lots of exciting birding and there's plenty more to come over the next couple of weeks. I hope to see you soon out at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.